Hey nerds, welcome to the final installment of the Spirited Nerds coverage of Peter Jackson's The Lord of the Rings trilogy um, covering Return of the King. And we have a full house. It is myself, Denise, Mariah, and Woo. David all to tell you our thoughts on Return of the King and also kind of where we landed as a whole after the whole journey. Um, we should start off this week. If you haven't heard the first two episodes, you can listen to our coverage on the Fellowship of the King and the Two Towers. You can find us on Spotify, on Overcast, on Apple Podcasts, uh, wherever you like to listen to podcasts, go ahead and, uh, look for those two episodes. Um, you can listen to them in any order, really. I'm sure aside from these three that I'm most of you have seen the lord of the rings so uh you, you probably don't need to watch them in order. <laughs> okay all right and the other the other thing that we would love for you to check out is our socials so mariah where can they find our socials yep you can find us on instagram and facebook and tiktok and twitter sometimes um, we actually got quite a few new followers, so thank you if any of you are listening, and maybe you saw Denise and David at AwesomeCon, and that's why you followed us, so thank you. But yeah, yeah, follow us, comment, interact, let us know if there's something you want us to talk about, or you just have an opinion on something you heard, and we can maybe address it at a, a later time. <laughs> so, Or thank you. if you have another beloved nerd friend. 20 years ago that you think some of us haven't seen let us know what that is and we'll go back and watch uh, except Twilight well, I was about to say almost any because you, you shut down mm -hmm. Twilight very fast you're right so. you're right almost any <laughs> you vetted how about that <laughs> we wouldn't be the spirited nerds if we didn't tell you what we were drinking tonight so let's start with uh, Denise because David looks like he's working on his mic oh is he okay um so I guess in celebration of Canada and America, I have in my cup um, some Coke, which is all American, splash of crown. Uh, so happy Canada Day, belated Canada Day, and uh, happy pre 4th of July, I guess. And yeah. then when that runs low, I got my all American beer as a backup, Yingling. So uh, yeah, I'm ready. Nice. Okay. Spirits of choice tonight. Nice. David, what do you got tonight? Uh, I'm a creature of habit, so I'm still just drinking my uncle nearest. No, no second drink though. But I did bring the bottle in here with me, so if I need to, there you go. <laughs> so, because it's a long sorry. movie, we have a lot to dis we have a lot to discuss. <laughs> Good God, hey, I only need one person to listen to this podcast, and I and and I and I love the fact that other people listen, and I appreciate you, but. The gentleman at Awesome Con that taught me into watching four hours and ten minutes of this shit. Um, <laughs> you, you you better fucking listen to this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> David is referring to uh, the gentleman who bullied everybody into watching the extended version. I've been watching the extended versions, but this time we have all watched the same extended version of The Return of the King, which is very very long. Listen, I, mean, I thought I reached what was a natural stopping point, and I still had at two least and five a half times, hours right? Left of this movie. Yeah, man. yeah. I, oh, at least God. five times. Yeah, yeah. Because Shauna, there was one time you were like, "Well, I'd love to get your reaction at the end of the movie." And I was like, when <laughs> that And you were like, "When your when heart tells you it's the end." Like, Shana, when your heart tells my heart has said it was the end like five times now. The the uh, um, look, I'll be honest with you. That was what I wanted your reaction on. Was <laughs> what is the end of the movie? God damn. That was that was my larger question was like, when do you think the end of the movie is? <laughs> Spoil it. So I needed you to live. <laughs> mm. uh, all right, Mariah, what do you got? So I'm actually not drinking today, and I'll tell you why. It's because we have to travel after this, and tomorrow's the fourth, and I don't think Eric wants drunk Mariah loading the car and being his driving mate so sober right. sober sober nerd this episode okay i'm That's not gonna fair. pressure at all 
but not even like half a drink, a meal with a, a with a splash or something in it. No. Okay. You know, like I said, I'm not gonna peer pressure. She thought about it. She thought about it. Though. I did. I did turn to the kitchen, but there's I, nothing. I the, she, she was nothing like, close enough to go grab. I get it. He's listening, so you gotta say. No, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a whiskey mule for for tonight, so that's rounding out our spirits for the evening. Um, what is it, mule? Just oh, a mule. Whiskey mule. Whiskey. Oh, I think it's an OSG mule. No, no. But along with an unofficial buzzball podcast, I believe it's like whiskey <laughs> podcast at this point. Yeah. We definitely That's are. That's official. <laughs> I know. Whiskey podcast with a little bit of buzzball sprinkled in. <laughs> Excellent. I think it's then time to turn our attention to The Lord of the Rings, the Return of the King, final yeah. installment. Um, this long extended version that we're going to be going through. So if you've only seen the theatrical release, you might actually learn about a couple new things today. So that might be very exciting for some of you. But I do want to lend it or lead Denise in to open this, open up the movie. I knew you fucking would. I knew it. Why would I not? It's, it is it. the origin story of your fave. So please, Denise, talk, talk us through the scenes of the, of the return of the king listen i was very disappointed in him i i mm -hmm. i <laughs> i guess so i found out in reading an article that's his cousin deagle which it, i was like what the fuck Smeagol yeah, i thought it was his brother yeah deagle and Smeagol. no they're cousins yeah. uh so yeah i'm gonna blame this on deagle this is deagle's fault he goes down and he brings the ring back up so Deagle. You on him? <laughs> yes, he brought the ring out. If you found that... a ring, in a, you found if you found a ring while we were out tubing or something like that, you wouldn't bring it back up. No, Denise. For what? I can't fit okay. it. This thing's probably fake and everything. I'm not. You risking can't it. fit it. Like you would at least. <laughs> All right, listen. I'm not bringing the ring up. Um. So yes, it's Deagle's fault. Smeagol immediately and that's another thing because i i hear some people were like he he was so under the spell of the ring and that's where that's why he was so far gone but i mean he murdered his cousin within 20 seconds of seeing the ring oh yeah yeah I know, was so quick. i was like how yeah, well, is that so that was my question did he is there like an origin story before this that he already knew about the ring because he i mean he was seduced quicker wow, than anybody in this movie has been seduced by that ring i mean it was it was like he already but, knew about it. That's what it felt like. No, I this is what I've... <laughs> yeah, because, man, that ring took his dumb ass so quick. Like, his cousin brought it up. He was like, yeah, man, check this ring out. It was over. That whole, like, that he knew. The meter change. He got, all like, five meters away from that bitch. Over it. it was his birthday. <laughs> that is all he had to do. Just give it to him. This this is he what I've been... Oh, like... <laughs> he did. Oh, my God. I mean, quickly. The look yeah. in his eyes eyes it was the same yeah look later. we'll get to that later but it was the same look he had when he was choking the shit out of frodo too yeah yeah just manic but this this is this is what i've been kind of saying like for the whole coverage of this when denise you're like what but he's good he's going to redeem he's like doing all these things like he has some good and i'm like he doesn't have it he's he's always been murderous it's just i know it's, it's not a smear campaign. It's we, we watched you saw it. it. <laughs> you saw it. It's not it's like he saw the ring in a, in his immediate crack. salute. Like he's just he, this is just who his character is. Yeah. He didn't have any qualms about it. He just like so he's always been menacing, murderous. He's always been those things. So in the presence of the ring, it just threw out any goodness that he had. It's it's gone. Mm -hmm. Yes. Quick. To me, Real quick. <laughs> I just, All right, when, right. No, 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 we're not doing this, Denise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so we so we get the we get the uh the playback on what happened with him, how he turned into Gollum. Yeah. Yep. Which is cool too, because I was trying to figure out in the other what was it two towers when he was like murderer? I was like, who the hell did you murder? 
So yeah, not Deagle. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how much time passes? A bunch of people after that, like a whole, but like he basically murders after that all the time for all kinds of stuff. He's just is just murderous um, being creature. Um, oh. I can't I can't remember exactly how Gollum's life is extremely long. Like we see that Bilbo Bilbo is over a hundred uh, when this story ends and he gets on the ship. Um, Gollum longer than that. Uh, mm. But you do kind of see him just devolve into this creature who lives under the mountain and eats raw fish and mm -hmm. sometimes orcs like or goblins. It, he just he's kind of crazy. Is that because he had the ring for so long? Yes. Because I was curious about that. Because like when Bilbo let it go, he aged up real quick and got to a point yes. where he was just like an old fucking feeble ass man. But Gollum is still out there serving hands to everybody. So I mean, yeah. But okay. Bilbo, but Bilbo also did voluntarily let it go. Like Bilbo left the ring behind. Yes, Gandalf was there to be like, no, seriously though, Bilbo, you gotta go, you gotta leave it. So Gandalf was there to help him. But Bilbo did that choice to leave the ring and move on. Gollum never did that. Gollum always goal to the goal was always to get his precious back. Mm -hmm. So. It's okay. just like that's that yearning that's it's got him hooked and he's going to to hang on for as long as possible to get back. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't remember what so, was next. That's okay. Yeah, she that's okay. Trying to say she handled it because we, we're gonna, gonna yeah. It, our movie. You, you it is. <laughs> And I know last time we kind of went through like each of the three journeys, but this movie sees them come to leave each other and kind of branch off. So we're just going to try to go through it in like in the order that we viewed it. So basically yeah. we go from Smeagol's origin story in the opening, and then we check in with Sam and Frodo um, on Mount Doom. And we still see Sam, the, the elf bread, um, telling Frodo, like, we need some for the return journey. Uh, Ron, when, you know, they're on the stairs and the bread is gone and Frodo's like, oh, yeah, you're the bad guy, Sam. Like, Sam always thought he was going to go yeah. home until the last, like, 20 minutes of this movie. Sam was really like, no, Mr. Frodo, we're going to go home. We need it for the return journey. Um, I mean, he had the bread on his, on his cape, though. That's a, that's, that's a... <laughs> That's a very bad look when it's just three of you on a mountain and you covered in cake dust or, or bread <laughs> dust. Like, that's not. <laughs> there are, but so yeah. many fingers in front. <laughs> I, would right. point at, I would definitely point at a nigga covered in bread. Like, <laughs> uh, that's a place where we, I think, we can agree to disagree. We're, we, we agree that Smeagol's evil, but we can agree to disagree that Sam's well, character would change so quickly. Okay, but no, but no, because, like, for me, a big part of that whole scene was Frodo and, and Gollum kind of bonding over their mutual need for that ring. So while Sam was like, hey, man, let's, let's, let's get there so we can throw this shit off a bridge, Gollum and Frodo were like, yo, we, we love this thing, we want it, it's ours. And the second Sam was like, hey, man, this shit ain't right. Like, we got to, you know, we got to go so that we can, so we can dump this shit so you can get back to normal and we can just go live our fucking lives. Frodo, just, it was, I don't think it was hard for Gollum to convince Frodo that Sam was trying to do something. No. Uh, no. Underhanded and, and yeah. take it from him. Yeah. And then, like I said, and then he pops up like, oh, all the food's going. <laughs> it's covered. Yeah, I was like, covered when you crush it up and sprinkle it on top. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Well, that's that's where we are. We're checking we're kind of just doing like touch with uh Sam and Frodo and Gollum here, just trying checking in with them on their journey. Um and then we see for the first time since the very end of the fellowship, the first movie we see most of our fellowship actually back together. We find Mary and Pippin. They are smoking their little hobbit weed and they are eating mm -hmm. ham and having a great time. Uh, enjoying the spoils of war at Sauron's Keep uh, at Isengard. And Gandalf, Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli and Theoden 
all roll up after their victory at Helm's Deep to figure out what to do with Saruman. So, any any thoughts on their they, reunification? They I was about to say, no, they came to a conclusion. Yeah, they came to a deep they conclusion. They, they killed did. the fuck on that dude. I was sure did. It's weird because I mean, with the last movie as like as as violent as it was, it, I, I'm still expecting a lower level of violence. That man, off like I mean, just straight head first off of the tallest tower ever. They couldn't even let him hit the ground. They put that man yeah. a steel spike on a gate. I don't even know where the gate came from. It felt like the gate was there for him to fall on. <laughs> no, it was like the water thing. Oh, okay. Right? It was yeah, like the water wheel. It was, but there were spikes. Very yeah. weird. Um, yeah. Yeah. Why are there spikes here? Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, is this one of the scenes that wasn't in the standard? I was about to say, so this um, scene where Sauron the White, the former white wizard, um, is like stabbed in the back by Grima Worm Tongue and he falls from his tower and is stabbed and then dies in a very graphic That's not way. In the theatrical? It's not no, in the theatrical I, release. Because I heard oh. um, I heard that wow. Christopher Lee, who plays Saruman, was actually really, really mad that he got left out of the movie to the point where he stopped talking to Peter Jackson. Wait, so, so where does it start him, and end? Like where does that see in the Hobbit? He was like, Okay, we're cool again. Because he he wasn't talking to them. So happens is I, I it's been a long time since i've seen, seen the theatrical release but what i do know is i i don't think there's the whole exchange with them on the roof necessarily mm-hmm. he rides up and where i know it picks up is when pippin picks up the palantir okay. from the water that's where mm. the theater he's like picks up again so he's oh, wow. just like he's so on you don't even know how it gets there no you, just... you don't you just at it like because you saw that you saw him using it in the two towers yeah but in the theatrical release it's just like oh it must have just during the chaos of battle and pippin sees like a glint of it in the water and gets off the horse and picks it up mm. so that was a bad okay. cut it, yeah that it's been a big emotion. bad choice yeah, yeah. yeah. and so in the something that gets left out of the end of the movie um in the books when everybody everything is done and the hobbits go back to hobbiton there's a thing that's called the scourge of the of the shire and so if you remember way back in the fellowship of the ring when frodo looks in glass and he sees like the shire down and orcs and goblins like and like they basically have enslaved the hobbits it's this whole big thing it happens at the end of the books and they did not include it in the movies because, as we kind of already touched on, the end of the movies keeps going for a little while. And so in the end, they were like, we actually have enough endings. We don't need to include Man. the Scourge of the Shire. Yeah. But mm. Sauron is the overseeing that. So he's still alive in the books. That's not how he meets his end. He basically, while the hobbits are off trying to save mankind, he goes behind their back and burn, like enslaves hobbits and burns the Shire to the ground. And the hobbits come back and have to like fight another And the reason that that's included in the books is because a lot of this is based on J.R.R. Tolkien's experience in World War II. Basically to point out like war touches everything. There's no safe spaces in war. Like you can't escape the reaches of it. David, please. Nice. No, I, like, I mean, I don't want to jump ahead, but when we were yeah. watching the, I don't remember what they were fighting. The first, the first battle of the movie, um, mm-hmm. after Shadowfax like runs up the shit, and the king there loses his mind, and mm-hmm. if it, it felt like they were shooting Dunkirk, it felt like. Yeah. For World War II, like just watching dead bodies on the ground and everything else, I was like, "Yeah, I, f- I feel like I'm watching a war movie at this point." Mm-hmm. It was, it was weird. Yeah, okay. That's where we get to a lot of like the partnerships and friendships. Of like, it's basically based on a lot of like the trauma bonding of like fellow soldiers going through like World War II as J.R.R. Tolkien experienced it. So that's where we get it. 
And, and that is when everybody comes together and they have to decide what happens to Grima and Saruman. And they both are gone at that point. They've the enemies. Um, I did want to kind of touch briefly here, Denise, because there is some magic here. And I wanted to do it. There's some fireballs and shit in the extended yeah. version. Did you make any notes on this, Denise? No. Because I wrote... I, I, I don't remember that happening. I, <laughs> Okay. This was probably like a, a common theme throughout, but I definitely need like appendices of Gandalf's powers because they are not consistent. And I don't, <laughs> I don't know like what he can and can't do because he broke the staff with his words. Like I have not seen that yet from him from the first two movies. So what, like, where, where did this come from? And we'll get to, cause I have several other points where he does things and I'm like, when, why didn't you use this earlier in the movie? My only point with Gandalf and about. his magic was when he got his ass whooped by the dude on what do they call him Nagels. The, no. Is that the thing that Vangmar? Yeah, is that the thing that they ride Nazgul? Yeah, the Nazgul is I mean, like the thing, thing that they ride. Yeah, that thing it's whooped cre- his ass. Yeah, yeah, they pulled up talking shit on him, and he just <laughs> laid on the ground while they were screaming at him, and then that thing got killed by uh. Well, the girl killed the killed the the thing. Yeah. Hammer. Yep. Hammer. Yeah, easily. and I'm like, yeah, after everything, mm-hmm. Gandalf was supposed to be. That thing put him in a box. <laughs> so then... we get. Sorry, David. You had. No, I'm just uh, that. That was my whole point. I just don't, I don't understand his powers. Oh. Is he strong, or they're is inconsistent? He than a hobbit, and a woman who had never seen battle before. And was like, hey, you stick next to me, we'll be okay. And then dudes talking shit, like, yeah, am I not don't get between and not going this food? And she's like, Yeah, whatever, and cuts the thing's head off. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, well, is it is it is it difficult or not? Because Gandalf is having all sorts of problems. And he only he only got to live. Well, I mean, really, mostly he got to live because of Shadow Facts. But then <laughs> some other stuff happened that drew away the dude's attention, so he just flew off. Yeah, that, and that, I, that was I, my whole thing about Gandalf's powers and me not understanding. Yeah, yeah, we'll go. We'll come versus the Witch King of Agmar because there's a lot going on there. But um, yeah, it is it is a little bit inconsistent how Gandalf uses powers and when. Um, but ultimately scared of the Witch King of Agmar, and so that kind of plays into it. Like he he liter- he is scared of him. Um, he's very power, like the Witch King is very powerful and there's very few things. That's one of them. Um, but then I just was curious to see how Denise was going to react to seeing like actual fire, these things happening. And it sounds like she doesn't even remember it. So I guess we can move on. <laughs> didn't even make my notes. I know what I'm saying. I don't even remember what scene y'all are talking about. Yeah. So Saruman and Gandalf are going back. I think so they find Saruman, the sphere. You know, and they find yeah when they find the spear and then like Gandalf and Saruman have like a fire battle but like actual fireballs are going back and forth like Mario From but it's okay yeah and he mm-hmm. falls off into yep. the the water wheel yeah mm-hmm. he got stabbed and then he fell I didn't know it was like a he did get fight. stabbed but there was some happening that I maybe you, saw that. you know the only <laughs> notes that I have from that section are the uh uh what is it the uh the we shall have peace monologue because that shit was hot. And then um, Legolas, that fucking shot he took to take out Grim, Grim, Grim Tongue, Grim Worm, what's his name? Grima. Worm Tongue, there we go. Uh, the shot from Legolas. Those are the only two notes I have from that. Oh. And I told Pippin to put the ball down, but I don't know if that happened <laughs> then or later. <laughs> other than that, it's the next scene. I have some notes about Pippin in that oh, sphere too. Yeah. 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 That, I, don't have, I didn't, I didn't, I must not have thought anything. What did that. you call, what, what's the actual name of it? The glass sphere. Uh, it's it's called a palantir, and palantir. so the the palantirs wasn't too too many, but there was like a handful of them. They're from like the very ancient past. Most of them have been lost, uh, but that's how Sauron and Sauron have been communicating is through these palantirs. So it's just like a so communication they- device. It's not like the ring at no, all. I mean, because that interaction he yeah. had with it was very ring-like, I guess. Because it, it's a magical artifact. Like, it's, it's it's not like a 
there's there's no modern technology involved it's just a mystical magical artifact mm-hmm. that communication through throughout them so when you see into one the other anybody who has any who has a palantir can see what's happening with all of the others mm. like this is really unsafe we don't know who has them we don't know mm. who is in like we have no clue who's watching us mm-hmm. can't have this thing just open and fun fact now that you guys are all interested in this um we do get a little glimpse of a palantir in rings of power I died. I was so excited. I was like, oh my god! <sighs> okay, rings of power, over. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, I was very excited. Yeah. Yeah. Who is the more. fucking... Was it Mary? The one that kept like trying to sneak a peek at that bitch after the fact? Pippin. It was Pippin. It's yeah, always Pippin. <laughs> It's always Pippin. Because Pippin is like Tobit, so he's always the one that's just getting in trouble and fucking shit up. He just I'm... doesn't understand. Like, he doesn't get the... He doesn't... Like, he just doesn't understand the type of danger that he's in, which is actually really sad when him and P- Mary say goodbye. Like, Mary's like, <laughs> you say, fucking idiot. Totally you yeah. don't understand it. And Pippin was like, but you're coming with me, no? And P- Mary was like, no. God, God damn it. Like, no, you're <laughs> no, such you a dummy. Should... There's consequences, yeah. man. You got to go. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. when you said it was sad. I was like, it's about damn time. He yeah. has a I felt man sad. up for his actions. Because I'm sick of this shit. <laughs> okay, maybe I maybe I only... Because I, I knew what was in store for Pippin. I was like, you you fucking idiot. Like, now you can go and hang out with Denethor? Like, that's sad for me. But anyways. Um, <laughs> any other thoughts on Pippin and the Palantir? <laughs> Sounded no. like... Nope. No, I'm just there. <laughs> he got he got everything he came for with that thing. He really did. He really did. Gandalf got fooled. <laughs> what did they put in place of that thing? You like a rock. Gandalf, Gandalf was sleeping. What is that? They oh, put a rock yeah. on. Oh yeah, like <laughs> something random. Are, like, are yeah. you the most powerful wizard on the planet or not? What is your with his name? eyes open? Listen. The that one was thing creepy that has been shit. consistent throughout these three movies <laughs> is that Gandalf ain't shit. I, I'm over it. Nah, he was lying for him the last movie. He's like a guide, but I then he just an unhelpful guide. No, no, last Gandalf is, seems just like an unhelpful him, guide. No, yeah. I st- I, that, no, she's been anti Gandalf the whole time since the bridge. All he did she was did in a white cloak. And I, uh uh-uh. uh. With Gandalf the White than with Gandalf the Gray. I, I think there's Gandalf been gray. Increasing, increasing since the bridge scene. That was the end of Denise yeah. and Gandalf. Yeah. Mm-mm. All, All right. Movies, been pretty okay. consistent for me. But it's, so what happens next? So so we we leave we leave them there. Pippin is fucked shit up. So now Sauron knows that there is. Uh oh. I'll just keep going. So Sauron sees Pippin in the Palantir. Everybody except for Pippin understands the urgency of what happened because now um, he hasn't told Sauron anything, but Sauron knows that there is a hobbit who has the ring. And so now everybody understands that Sauron thinks that that hobbit is Pippin. And so the forces of evil will be coming for Pippin. So Gandalf mm. and uh, Pippin take off to Gondor. The rest of the group try to rally the men of Rohan uh, or keep them kind of like battle hungry so that when Ro- when G- when Gondor calls, the men of Rohan will respond. So they're kind of like trying to warm them up to the idea of going and fighting this battle for the other kingdom. And mm-hmm. Theoden- Theoden's not really hot on the idea, so it takes some massaging. But in the meantime, we pop back over to Sam overhearing Gollum and Smeagol plotting the ultimate murder of and Sam uh, up in Sirith Ungol with Shelob. This is, um, is, so is this the scene where he calls him a fat hobbit? I mean, he calls him a fat hobbit. I don't know if I said consistently throughout the movie, yeah, but... <laughs> All of... Well, this was like the first... Okay, I don't know. That's, that was the he notes I have. <laughs> He calls him a fat hobbit pretty much all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he calls him like the fat one. 
I'll say that my sub note to it was no way Denise thinks he's good. Why does it keep coming back? And the G in Gollum stands for gaslighting. I do. <laughs> my man, he he's being used, and we both know that he is a pawn in this game. I feel bad for him, genuinely. Sorry, I cut out for a second. Who's being used? Gollum. Denise is trying to say Gollum is being used here. <laughs> I'm glad I missed that part. Okay. Sauron is using him. Sauron <laughs> had him and, no. and sent him out into the world to get the ring back. He's being used. Shauna, you know it. In in your appendices, it has said that. I know it has. You read it? I read it and I, I saw a video <laughs> breakdown on it. Did, okay. Wait, the video breakdown was based on <laughs> the book or just somebody's idea? The book. So here's Are you the saying thing, that because okay. I didn't read the book? <laughs> I'm just saying because Mariah, uh, we were talking about the scene when they were in the on the stairs, and um, what's his face? Gollum was uh, got, got caught trying to um, kill or talk about killing. I, I can't remember, but he basically was talking about killing him or something, and he was oh Frodo, the dumbest like motherfucker that. on earth, man. Sam was like, "Yo, your man just said out loud that he wants to kill you." <laughs> yes, that's and what Frodo happened. was like, "Nah, that's not. He wouldn't do that." Yeah. <laughs> And so I will, I'm going to address, I'm going to address Denise's point. I, although first, there, I think there's an echo. Yeah, there is. Or maybe, maybe echo cancellation. I can't now because of the recording, so. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, hold on, let me try it. Yeah, no, I can't do it. Oh, that's a bummer. That's okay. Um. So what Denise is referring to is... Do you want to come out and come back in? Because it's going to be a pain in the ass if we take out everything. Denise, you should be able to do the noise canceling since you're the, like, co Yeah, but I'll say, we, we would literally have to stop recording for me to turn my, the echo cancellation oh. back on. Oh, right. I don't even see David in here. How do I do it? I don't know. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Hold on. Sorry to the people watching us on live stream YouTube. Oh, we'll be back in a moment. Are we live? Right God <laughs> damn it, man. No, I can't change it. So I guess I just got to figure out a way to do it in editing. Okay. Oh, no. Like, pause pause the recording and then come back in. Yeah, let's just do that. How do you do that? I don't know. Well, I mean, basically, we would have to stop the recording just and then come back in the room. Again? Yeah. Mariah, will that mess anything up for you? No. I... Okay. So stop and then come back in. Yeah, we would. Yeah. You would just yeah. have like 